Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, playing Faster Than Light. Welcome aboard, and let's jump right in. It's our new game. We are going to be playing today using the Federation Cruiser Type B. Before we get started, we'll quickly talk a little bit about the ship and its crew, its weaponry, and whatnot, but before we do even that, we need to rename this puppy. I like to have unique names, themed names for my ships and crew, so this is going to become no longer the Nissos, it will be the VSS for Valorous Spaceship Plague. Fantastic. So, human, you are going to be renamed Cholera. And you're also going to be female, just for fun. Ta-da! And Allison the Zoltan, you are no longer going to be Allison, you are going to be Ebola. Voila. And Slug, you're not Mikhail Olofsson. That's a terrible name for a slug. I'm going to call you Leprosy. Done. Alright, so we have Cholera, Ebola, and Leprosy, ready to spread joy throughout the galaxy. Before we get started, we'll talk a little bit more about how to get this particular model of ship. In order to get the Federation Cruiser in the first place, you need to complete the game, which can be a fairly daunting task, but once you do it, you get this ship, which is a lot of fun to play with, because it's one special feature, which I'll talk about in a minute. In order to unlock this variant of it, of it however, you have to complete two of the three achievements specific to this model of ship. The two that I think are the easiest to accomplish are this one, Master of Patience, using only the artillery beam to destroy an enemy ship while taking no hull damage. If you have heavy shields, and basically uh, nothing else, heavy shields and an artillery beam, it's fairly easy to do this. All you have to do is find something that can't get through your shields. Problem solved. As for this one, Artillery Mastery, get to Sector 5 in the Federation Cruiser without ever upgrading your weapon systems. That one was a little bit more challenging, but it was a lot of fun to do. Basically, it involves having a really high-level artillery beam, and having a whole pile of shields and a lot of evasion. You can still use your, the weapons that your ship comes with. As the Type A, you get this Burst Laser 2, which is pretty decent at the start of the game. So you can still use that, you just can never upgrade it. You can never upgrade your weapons control. Anyway, pretty cool thing. When you do that all, you get this. It has its own advantages and disadvantages, in my opinion. It starts off with many of the same systems. In fact, I believe it has all of the same systems. It's got basic shields, engines, oxygen, weapons, health, helm, radar, and doors. However, it has one additional level starting on your artillery beam. A really, really powerful laser with a long recharge timer. You basically has its own room, so other than that, it always runs. It also auto-targets, which is a little bit less than ideal in some cases, but hey, it's pretty good. You also start with two weapons instead of one. Instead of a burst laser Mark II, which fires three one damage lasers, you start off with a dual laser, which shoots two shots, which do one damage each, and a Leto missile launcher, which has to be the smallest missile launcher I've ever seen in this game. It takes one power, shoots one missile, and it does one damage. <laughs> Basically, these are pretty low power weapons, but you do have a two level artillery beam to start you off. The other big disadvantage is that you start off with only three crew instead of four, like in the Type A which means you can only power three of your systems. Another thing to watch out for is the weird layout of this ship. All of your, uh, your main airlocks are on this side, so if you want to get oxygen out of these rooms, it's going to take a couple rooms to get there. However, you also have these auxiliary airlocks near the engines for some strange reason. That seems like a terrible place to put your airlocks. All the air is going to smash in there as you're flying. I guess not. That's not how air works. Anyway, point being, <laughs> these rooms are a lot easier to access because they have these close-by things, but your weapons and your shields are being a little bit more susceptible to, to fires. But that's enough talking. Let's jump in and fly this sucker. We're obviously going to be playing on normal. And... Allons-y, as the French say. Here we go. So the data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need the supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. So, in case you don't know, we are carrying information vital to the survival of the Federation. Before we t fly off on our journey, we need to make sure our main positions are manned. So, Ebola, you are now in charge of weapons. Leprosy, you are in charge of shields. Actually, I want, I want Leprosy in charge of weapons. I think that's awesome. No, no, Leprosy is a skin disease. I guess it should be in charge of uh, in shields. That's appropriate. Ooh, okay. So, ooh, interesting. Interesting. We also have two additional energy bars, because I have one in here. So, which means we can double charge this and double charge this. Mmm, interesting. Because of the way the... Uh, the Zoltan 1 energy bar bonus in the room he's in works, you can actually power all systems at the start. That's pretty cool. Not many other ships can do that. So, we're powering our weapons and our shields because I feel those are the two most vital things to have powered at the beginning, as well as the helm, which you must have powered in order to be able to really play. Without a person on the helm, you can no longer you can you cannot jump or evade. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna jump. 
Here's our star map. We're working on getting over here, and obviously we're going to take the longest possible path to get there. So we're going to start off... We could go this way, I imagine, but I want to go over here. No, let's go this way. Looks like we'll be able to take more jumps. Let's go. We start off with no drone parts, but that's okay because we have no drone system. Jump leads to a completely unremarkable binary star system. There is nothing else around. Alright, well that's boring. Let's jump again. Here we go. Show me something. I want to see how this ship fights. Can you fight the plague? Not many can. You detect a rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. Their weapons are charged, but they're not firing yet. We can intervene to defend the outpost or avoid the conflict, but no, we're gonna fight them. The rebel responds to your threat. I don't know who you are, but no one defies the rebel fleet. They move in to engage. Excellent. This is our slug bonus here. We can see where enemy life forms are. Pretty neat stuff. We are going to try and take out their weapons with our Leto missile. See how that goes. And once that happens, we're probably going to hit them in the... Yeah. Oh, she hit me right in the command console. Right in the shields with our lasers. That was actually that was a pretty decent laser. I want to reserve my uh, my ammunition for my rockets because I only have a few. I've got eight. I don't want to waste them. So I'm going to hold on to those. Presumably my uh, next salvo of dual lasers and this artillery beam shot will clear the rest of this fight up. So let's see how it goes. People moving around trying to fix things. We've got a giant laser about to hit them in the face. That generally ruins everyone's day. Oh, and it's on fire too. No good for them. They are done. Taken out with the greatest of ease. Well, I have a feeling this ship is going to be ma like massively powerful. Now, as we've defeated them, we receive some scrap. The outpost hails us. The pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation. Take this for your help. We receive four scrap and eleven fuel. Very nice. We now have 38 scrap. Is there anything we want to buy? Do we have anything in our hall? No. Hold, I meant to say. We have 38 scrap. Is there anything we want to buy? I'd like to save up, I think, right from the beginning for shields bar 2, which means we have to have 50 to pay for uh, the first two levels of shields to get us a second shield bar, and another tw uh, 45 for the energy bar. So we'll take 95 for our first purchase, but I think it will be much worth it in the end, because we already have very powerful starting weapons. We're going to jump back here to this distress beacon and see what they have to say. Hello there, people. What do you say? Oh no, we find a number of ships fleeing from a small space station. We hail them, asking what's wrong. Help! We're being overrun by some sort of giant alien spiders! We can send the crew to help immediately. Giant alien spiders are no joke. This is a dangerous mission. Giant alien spiders have a tendency of killing your crew, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's go. Your crew slowly creeps up on a cluster of the creatures from behind. Without warning, the giant arachnids turn and charge. However, your team stays in control, and before long, you've beaten them back. Let's contact the station owners. Hello? They are thrilled with your success and offer us a reward. Three fuel, two drone parts, and nine scrap. That is a really paltry amount of scrap, but that's okay. We'll save up, and we'll get more. And here they come. The Rebels are on our tails already. They're fast, fast on the go. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. That's what I like to hear. We're going to take those military goods from them. Oh my goodness, they have a lot of weaponry. We're going to start off the same way we did last time. We're going to hit them right in the weapons, but I'm going to hit them right in the weapons with both of my attacks. Because they have so much weaponry here, I really don't want to get hit. That would not be healthy. Also, an interesting fact about this ship is that since the med sensor is way over here, it's actually going to be... Oh no, they damaged it. It actually could be quite tricky to uh, get people healed if they're on this end of the ship. I'm going to try and repair this. I'll take a person off of my shield since their laser is now down. All they have is this single shot, which can't hurt me anymore. And hopefully, I'll be able to repair the artillery beam, which should do a whole pile of damage when it's next able to hit. It has a chance of only doing two, but it can do four or five, depending on how the laser actually fires. But it looks like we're mostly repaired now, so this should be a fairly easy way out of here. Hit them a couple more times with some lasers. There we go. Oh, that shit's tough. Doesn't want to go down. Artillery beam, do your work. There we go. Four damage hit. Very nice. Ship is down. We salvage what we can from the broken ship, which consists of 18 scrap. We investigate the station, and we're so... Ooh. No weapons. The station is a storage site for various resources. You salvage everything possible. Two fuel, two missiles, and eight scrap. If you find weapons in the early stages of the game, that can completely change how your game plays out. Like, massively overpower you and whatnot. But, it's also the fact is you can find them, which can be fairly unlikely. You can also sell them if they're not something you can use, such as drone parts. 
Uh huh. Zoltan ship with an energy shield. Those are always troublesome because you cannot do anything until you burn down that green bar. Once you arrive, your arrive, arrive. Yes. Once you arrive, your screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools, and they have tried to shut down our engines. Your crew manages to keep them barely operational, and you move in to attack. So we're supplying now with one less engine block, which means we have only 10% evasion instead of 15. A little bit unfortunate. And since they have shields, I'm not going to bother wasting my rockets, because the rockets do not do a whole lot against those shields. Oh no, this is bad. Maybe I will start using rockets to speed up the process, because I do not want to start getting hit when I have no shields active because of that EMP generator. Oh, and I missed the rocket, and they take out my energy. My oxygen, I mean. This is going to be unfortunate. Do not put up with that, folks. That is not acceptable. Take out their weapons with a rocket, before they can fire again. Oh no, they and I missed another rocket. That's not good. Come on, guys, I hope you have better aim than that. Let's take those shields out for good and hopefully maybe not miss this rocket. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, here we go. There we go. Took out the EMP. Now they're not dangerous. As long as I can fix the good. Fix that, we're on a better train. And how did he hit me? Oh, he must have launched that before. I managed to take his, uh... They're on fire, that's what they are. Everything on their ship is on fire. Oh, no, that was my artillery view. My mistake. <laughs> so much stuff going on, it's so easy to get completely distracted. Whew. With the pirate ship destroyed, your engines come online again. You salvage what you can from the debris. Two fuel, nine scrap. Very nice. A lot of damage taken, but uh, should, that should be okay. Oh, prepared before I got there. We're going to try and heal up, so... Ebola and Cholera are going to go heal up a little bit. <sighs> Ebola and your low health. You're going to get killed one day because of that. Send him back to the helm. Reactivate Lido missiles. Those Lidos were really missing a lot. I don't know if that should be because I don't have very good aim yet, or uh, because these actually have low accuracy, but I guess we'll find out later on. We are getting close to the point where, we'll, where we will be able to activate our second shield bubble, which will make a humongous difference in this early stage in the game. We detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. We can intervene to defend the outpost, or we can avoid the conflict, but we are not going to avoid any conflicts here. We're intervening to defend this outpost. Detecting the higher threat, the automated ship moves in to engage us. Well, that's fine. Oh, they have a cloaking device. That could be problematic. They also have two simultaneously shooting single lasers. However, they also have no shields. Aha! So if we can hit those weapons, they will not be able to do any more damage to us in this fight. And I missed twice. Man, this, uh, the aim on this ship is terrible. This is gonna hurt. Nope, yes it is. Now, take out my oxygen straight away again. Get back over there. Now hit them this time, please. Thank you. Problem solved. <laughs> we took one hit for the team, but now it is impossible to, for them to hurt us. We're also gonna take out the helm, because by doing that we make it impossible for them to dodge our shots. Since we have such terrible accuracy, I have a feeling that might help. We still managed to miss one after hitting the first shot, which makes really, really bad appearance on our part. There we go. There we go. Now they can't dodge anything, and the artillery beam kills them as they try to cloak. Suckers. The ship breaks apart, and you as quickly salvage what you can. Fuel, two missiles, and 11 scrap. We're almost there. Oh, here we go. The outpost hails you after the scout was destroyed. Thanks for the help. We've been harassed non-stop by those scouts. Take this on the house. Three fuel, one missile, and 15 scrap. Fantastic. We have a whole pile of fuel, and we're going to spend some scrap right now. Upgrading two shield bars, buying two power bars, there we go. Level 2 shields, online. Much nicer. Not a big visual effect, but man, that makes a difference this early in the game. Alright, let's jump ahead and see if we can wreak more havoc on this poor unsuspecting sector. The nearby planet shows signs of habitation and great beauty. A rudimentary automated planetary defense system is looping its message into space. Warning, quarantine level 5 in effect under FH8 Act 22, Article 11.2. Warning, quarantine level 5. Oh, looks like we've already been here. Plague has already reached this planet. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, we're flying into a nebula, which is often a bad idea, but I figure we might as well give it a shot. And it was a bad idea. We see a number of derelict ships near this beacon. After a short time, you hear the telltale sounds of a teleporter and shouts coming from within the ship. We have been boarded. There are three boarders on this ship. That is not good for us, especially because our crew is not very good at fighting. So, I guess we'll bring these guys down to here. 
he's gonna come fight me in the helm, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Okay, one of you, probably the slug would be better. Slug would be better. Zoltan suck at fighting. Hmm, I can't even do much about this. This is not good. Not good. I don't have advanced doors, so I can't keep them in one place. My slug is getting murdered. My Zoltan already got murdered. Don't go through the room that's full of people shooting you. At least we can't really take damage, so if this takes as long as it takes, it doesn't really matter. Cholera is getting murdered, so we'll jump out of there. They can destroy that for a bit, I guess. No, you, Ebola, get out of that room. Cholera, you get back in the room. You're a bit tricky to maneuver these people. We'll grab both of them and send them in to defend the artillery beam again. Unfortunately, Ebola only having 70 health makes him a terrible melee fighter. Come on, Cholera. Alright, Cholera is just about healed. There we go. We'll take Ebola out and send Cholera in. I hope you like diseases, because we've got lots on this ship. Alright, let's kill him. Our slug is going to kill someone, and I think our captain will have no problem taking out the second. There we go. Now time to repair some damage. Send him down to fix the doors while they work on fixing up our artillery beam. I don't know why it's called an artillery beam. It seems like a very strange name to me. But I'm sure they have their reasons. Artillery to me sounds like, you know, big flak cannons blasting at something. Not, uh... Well, this. Not a laser that fires. Alright, Leprosy, back in your station. Cholera, back in your station. Reactivate weapons. Uh, now we should be able to jump out. That was uh, quite a harrying little mini-adventure. We didn't even get anything out of it, which is a problem. So we are going to go here, back to the store, and then out the exit. Hopefully we'll be able to make a little bit more resources so we can buy something in the store. Otherwise it'll look like it'll just be repairs. Upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. And let's reject that offer. Too bad, you'll regret this decision. They're full of slugs. That's okay, we got slugs too. So we know how to deal with slugs. Shoot them with missiles. There are a lot of different ways you can attack the enemy ship to bring things to your advantage, but for the moment, we just want to take out their weapons. They can't even really hurt us. We have two shields. So, nothing they can do can really call, give us any harm. But, it's never nice to have them shooting at you, so I'm just going to shoot that first shot at the weapons. Just in case. Now they're off the helm, so they cannot dodge. And now they're back on the helm, so now they can't dodge. <laughs> Alright, their oxygen being down is going to start giving them problems soon, I expect. We can take their shields back out if we can, because that would be fantastic. Excellent, doing some damage, and the artillery beam comes in to just mess some people up. We don't need to waste any Lido missiles at the moment, because the laser can easily get through this. Ah, now they're trying to run. Good thing their engine is destroyed. It's kind of hard to run away when you don't have any engines. It is a little bit disappointing that this missile only does one damage. It makes it not very good as a missile for taking out systems. It makes it not very good for basically most things. Oh, that's like there was some fire in there, because they blew up before I even shot them that time. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material, with one missile, one drone part, and 17 scrap. But yeah, it, it's, it gets through shields, but it doesn't hurt things on the inside. So I don't really know how effective it is. I guess the fact that it can cause fire and breaching, I think? Yeah, that makes it a little bit more powerful, but even then... Even then... You know, we could go for... doors next, even though they're not the most effective thing. They will stop borders from wrecking us quite so much. It'll make it easier for us to run away and heal. So I think we're actually going to buy doors. But first, we're going to see if there's anything interesting at the store. Because there's no point in spending your money before you know you can go to a store. A ship engineer should have a small shop here. And he wants to sell us some crew, which we can't afford. Some drone controllers and teleporters, which we can't afford. Some repairs, which we can't afford. So we'll take those, although not that many. This is a great deal. This is the best possible rate. But I want 20 so I can buy those doors. So we go into our ship, upgrade our doors. Great thing about those upgrades is you also do not need to power them. They power themselves. And we will jump to the exit, see what's here. All I'm hoping for is not an electrical storm. The electrical storms are the worst. Oh, good. The long range beacon is almost hidden within a nebula. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. And there's nothing here. So let's jump. Jump. Jump, jump on it. So here we have our space map. Our galaxy. We have a couple options here. I like the option of going 
south on the southern road, because down here, if we choose to, we can go almost entirely on green locations, which are generally nice, or we can go entirely on, well, mostly on red locations. The thing that I do not want to go into is nebulous locations, because nebulous locations have a tendency of wrecking you. They either have nothing in them, or electrical storms and enemies, which have a tendency to just completely destroy you. So I'm going to avoid them as much as possible. We're going to go south into the civilian sector, as opposed to, you know, the other civilian sector. <laughs> Welcome to a new sector. Get to the exit beacon and jump to the new snack sector before the rebels catch up. Continue. However, before we continue on this fantastic adventure, we're going to have to stop here for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, piloting the VSS Plague through FTL, faster than light. If you liked the episode, don't forget to like the episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.